the High Court erred on the side of technicality in their decision on Marcos burial. To help us parse through the details, let me bring in Attorney Mel Santa Maria. Mel, of course, is the Dean of the Far Eastern University's College of Law. Of course, he's also a colleague at TV5, the legal analyst of TV5. Attorney Mel, welcome. Good evening, Robbie. Notwithstanding the fact that we have not yet actually seen the formal decision uh, from the, is there anything that, that surprises you from what we know so far about the decision? Well, yes. Uh, the report which says that it is a political question and therefore it should not be taken into consideration or be the Supreme Court should not take cognizance of it, that's, that's very surprising. Mm -hmm. Because under our new constitution, there is an expanded power of the Supreme Court precisely mm -hmm. dealing with political questions if the mm -hmm. president gravely abuses discretion. Okay. So if the point is grave abuse of discretion, mm -hmm. then the Supreme Court can take cognizance of this probably what you may call a political issue case. Okay. Uh, all right. A, a, a quick clarification on that. I mean, we're talking about grave abuse. Uh, is it accurate to say that the Supreme Court voted to allow the burial, or did the Supreme Court basically just say it, this is well within the prerogative of the president to decide on? What is not prohibited is allowed. Mm -hmm. That is essentially the theory, the context of the majority of opinion. Mm. There is no express provision of this allowance, okay. and therefore it is allowed. Okay. And then there is no law, and therefore it is not prohibited. It's, it's, it's sort of very textual. Instead of looking at the spirit, the values, and the moorings of all laws pertinent yeah. to the issue. But they're saying basically it's a political question. It's yes. not for the Supreme Court to settle, and it's not something that... That, that they can uh, establish any standard rule on. Is that what they're saying? That is what they're saying. Mm. But is that accurate? We have to go back to the Constitution. The, when you deal with the Constitution, you deal with something both political and legal. Mm. The, the Constitution is... Uh, Embedded in the Constitution is a historical basis for its creation. Yeah, former Solicitor General Florin Hilbay said something about that. He said uh, that, you know, yes, it's hard to establish standards. We're trying to uh, stick to rules in the decision. But he does say, and he argues, that uh, the, the government post Marcos, both the executive and the legislature, right. have actually acted and enacted laws that proceed from the premise that Marcos was a plunderer and that there were human rights violations. Right. It, it is not a subjective proposition. Do you agree to that? I agree to that because you have the legislation on the reparations law on human rights victims and it is clearly stated in that law that it is a state policy to recognize the atrocities of Marcos and mm -hmm. that victims must be uh, compensated. Yes. Not only that, mm. you have the PCGG law. Yes. And that is the law that, you know, created this agency which, you know, got hold of all these billions of pesos, mm. and that is undisputed. Mm. So both a huge type of larceny mm. and human rights violation, so, so it, that is undisputed. So, yes, Florian Hillby is very correct. These are uh, determination of facts, both okay. legislative okay and judicial, which you should already accept. Okay, so not to review the arguments of those who were opposed to this from the very start. What happens now? After the decision from the Supreme Court, what happens now? Is it self-executory? Can the Marcoses bring the body now to the ng mga bayani? Where it's still subject to a motion for reconsideration. Okay. But the more important focus now, uh, Robbie, is probably not the Marcoses, hmm. but the Supreme Court. So the focus is accountability. Mm. When, you, when you litigate, and you litigate on a public office and a public servant or a previous public servant, there are only two questions, mm. accountability or, imp or uh, impunity. Mm. That, is the, that is the overriding consideration. So we've seen the Supreme Court decided highly political uh, persons like Enrile, mm. like GMA, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, or even like Binay. Mm. And in almost all these cases, mm. it leaned towards impunity and really was given bail. Mm. GMA was acquitted. Binay, yes, the condonation doctrine was abandoned but not made applicable to Binay. Mm. And then you have, you have uh, Sing Son. Mm. He was uh, convicted in Hong Kong mm. of uh, drugs. Mm. And yet when he was tried to be ousted in the Congress, he said, no, he cannot be ousted. So if you look at the trend it seems that, at least by way of perception, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court is leaning towards impunity if yeah. 
people involved are high, yeah. highly known. Mm -hmm. And what is remarkable in this case is that the person involved is dead. Okay. So he seems to be alive. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. He seems to be alive. In fact, he seems to be more alive than ever. Now, the, the, the Marcoses and the government is saying by doing this, by finally laying him to rest at the Libingan ng mga bayani, that there will be healing and reconciliation can finally proceed. Uh, but if you look at the reaction of people now on social media, on media, the left is already calling for protests, the students are, are organizing rallies and so on. Do you think this might actually have the opposite effect? Oh, definitely. Merely the name of Marcos is a polarizing name. Mm. You will have anti and pro-Marcos mm. and probably uh, up to the present time. And the Supreme Court had an opportunity to indeed put this to rest. Had they come up with a decision that, was, that would have basically said, this, these are the standards, these are the values. And instead, as, as that quote from that justice said, you know, we leave it to history, whatever Correct. comes of it. Uh, what is remarkable is that it's a, the majority decision also said that Marcos is not all good, but he is not purely evil too. Mm. And so let history judge who he is. Mm. And with respect to human rights atrocities, then let us, it is a rather subjective thing. Mm. So, you know, you begin to wonder, how could you even say that? There is a law providing for human rights reparations. Well, obviously, Attorney Mel, this is going to be a very long conversation. Very long, yeah. It will spill over far beyond this program, far beyond today. Uh, and thank you, Attorney Mel. In the thank meantime. you, Robbie.